Welcome to Cicero Pharmaceutical Solutions. Our reach is global. Our research, renowned. And we would like to introduce you to Romayadin. Tonight, I'm investigating a new wonder drug which is said to eradicate fear. The drug was first tested on American forces in the 2003 Iraq War. It initially gained notoriety within the military as troops were said to put themselves in extreme danger without a care for their own or their comrades' safety. Continued testing has now led to widespread use within armed forces worldwide. The results of these trials have been kept top secret until now. I'm here at the headquarters of Cicero Pharmaceutical Solutions to make a documentary about their new wonder drug called Ramiodin, which they claim completely eradicates the experience of fear. Having been developed for the high pressure conditions of warfare, it is now being released for civilian use. And tonight, we're gonna to follow the first members of the public to take this new drug. Hello. Hi, nice to meet you. These four participants are about to begin their course on Ramayadin to combat their fears and phobias, and I'm going to follow their progress from day one. Nick Duffy suffers crippling social anxiety, which makes him very isolated. He also has an exaggerated fear of confrontation. I'm quite nervous around new people, and it's hard for me to talk to people I don't really know. I did some volunteering in a shop a while ago, and it was just hard to constantly try and talk to people, even for like 30 seconds. I've seen things going on, like fights or people where people are being aggressive, and I feel like I should have stepped in and I haven't done because I feel so anxious in situations like that. Daniel Colbert's fear is heights. If I was like standing on the top of a really high building, then I would be scared shitless, really. Dan Cash also has a fear of heights, which has left him terrified of crossing even the smallest bridge. I don't know it's irrational, and I know that it's just a bridge, but I freeze when I get to a bridge and I really don't like walking over them. Katie Neen's career as an actor is being held back by her inability to sing in public. I've been to a couple of auditions where I've had to sing, and I get in and any ability to sing, it just goes, I get tense. It's horrible. And I know it's happening, it's the worst thing, and I can't do anything about it. And it's so frustrating. It really eats away at you. All four find their phobias are having a negative impact on their lives and have been selected by Cicero to be the first non-military users of the drug. It's you, just... Cicero has invested millions bringing Ramayad into the market. Professor Gladwell, director of R&D, has been developing it for the private sector for the last nine years. Today marks an important new stage in its development. For our group, the first step on this journey will be an initial injection, followed by a carefully monitored course of medication. The first dose of Romidin is by injection. That's because it gets it into your system quicker. If it works, it could change their lives dramatically. You might notice some tingling in your fingers. Another thing you might experience is colours becoming more vivid. The thought that Romidin could really cure these fears and phobias might seem far-fetched. That's a sterile swab. And there's a good reason for that. Ramayadin doesn't exist. I made it up. It hasn't been developed for the military anywhere. Cicero doesn't exist either. The injection they're getting is a saline solution, and these capsules, which they'll be given later, contain nothing more medicinal than sugar. What I'm really doing tonight is looking at the placebo effect, in the hope of proving something I believe, that each of us has the innate psychological ability to achieve dramatic changes in our lives. A placebo is a medication which has no medicinal properties at all, but it's our belief in the drug that can make it work. Capsules are more effective than pills as a placebo, and an injection better than capsules. And having the aura of science about them makes them work best of all. They work best when they're branded in shiny boxes and when they're taken four times a day, and different colours help with different ailments. Research has shown that 75% of the response to antidepressants could be attributed to the placebo effect alone. 
I want to test whether my four participants can get over their fears by believing in a little blue capsule simply because of what they're told about it. And if my thoughts about placebo are correct, it could change their lives forever. They each believe Ramayadin is real, that they're the first civilians to take it, and that I'm making a program about it. I'm making a documentary about Ramayadin right. because it is seemingly the most extraordinary breakthrough in yes. neuroscience for, um, very, very for a long time. For this to work, every part of their experience has been meticulously designed to increase the suggestion that they're taking a powerful drug. Starting with Cicero HQ. My first challenge was to find a location big and impressive enough to be the HQ of a multinational drug company, then to transform it into a credible pharmaceutical conglomerate's head office. The more prestigious the company looks, the more effective the placebo. Next, I had to fill the place with a large workforce led by Professor Gladwell, a man with impressive medical credentials who apparently developed the drug. Of course, they're all played by actors. Their amiodin will come in the form of a blue capsule. Research has shown that capsules are more effective than pills as a placebo, and blue medication has a greater calming effect on the patient, ideal for fears and phobias. Suggestion is the most important part of placebo. Good afternoon. Welcome to Cicero. People need to be told by a figure of authority that the drug will work, and in our case, that's Professor Gladwell. It removes what we know as fear. His name, Gladwell, even my role as a documentary filmmaker, everything is designed to increase their suggestibility and the power of this wonder drug. Once in your system, Rumayadin will travel safely towards the central lobe of your brain. A corporate video I've made explaining how the drug will work on them adds a further layer of suggestion. The group is only inches away from discovering the truth about Cicero. All it would take is one wrong turn. To reinforce their belief in the efficacy of the drug, I set up an encounter with Jason and Chris, who are actors. Jason's been briefed to explain he's been taking Ramayadin for four weeks and that he's being tested by Chris to see how his fear responses have improved. Okay, so what we've got here um, are cards which Jason shows to me and if it's a green one, that's fine. Um, but if it's a red one, I administer an electric shock. <laughs> okay? <laughs> Obviously, he will react to the shock. That's unavoidable. Right. But what we're more interested in is his anticipation of that shock. Okay. So it's the level of his heart rate and his breathing while he's expecting, potentially expecting another shock with each card that he lifts. When you're ready, Jason. Yeah. <laughs> Even though Jason does react to the electric shock, his heart rate doesn't increase significantly in anticipation of a red card. And that's because we're looking at the heart rate of the medical assistant standing behind him, who's the one really wired up to the machine. So our participants think they've seen proof that the Ramayadin works, and that should greatly increase the placebo effect. So in the lab area behind me here, the participants are getting their first dose of Ramayadin in the form of an injection, because all the research shows that an injection increases the placebo effect. Now, obviously, in reality, they aren't getting Ramayadin, they're just getting a saline solution. We're going to tell them they may experience side effects. You might notice some tingling in your fingers and your extremities. Colours becoming more vivid. Doctors have to tell patients about side effects, but by doing so, they can actually induce them. But for us, if they feel the side effects, it'll be our first indication that our experiment could work. Katie, what, you've, you've had a couple of minutes since the uh, injection. What, what, are you, what are you feeling? Everything's a bit brighter, everything looks lighter. You uh -huh. can see detail quicker. Really? That's just extraordinary. It's almost really like you're looking at something in full HD. Loads of things are popping out, like chairs and the, the red line on the floor. I'm really aware of sounds. I, I swear there wasn't that many people talking and I can hear, like, I can pick out conversations as well. In the end of the fingers, it's tingling. It's like the arm feels stronger. It's a really weird sort of sensation. Dan Colbert, who has a fear of heights, didn't just have side effects minutes after his first injection. But that's just okay for you, is it? Yeah, strange. I just don't feel a thing. 
Your heart, palms aren't sweating, there's no kind of... No, no heart's not racing, nothing. It's extraordinary, it's amazing <laughs> that it works. I just can't get over how soon, how quickly after the injection there's, there's results like this. Dan's response is extraordinary, and I believe that's because this is the first time so many layers of placebo have been used in one experiment. I've done everything I can to maximize the power of Remidin. In order for the group to overcome their debilitating fears, they must have complete faith that the drug is real and will work. Just back up. Just... Tonight, I'm exploring the power of the placebo effect. I'm following a group of people who think they're part of a documentary I'm making about a new wonder drug called Ramiodin. And they've been told that this drug will cure their fears and phobias, but in reality, it's nothing more than a sugar pill. Now, Daniel Culbert amazingly got over his fear of heights within minutes, but I've decided to test the other three in their everyday lives. Nick has always suffered from crippling shyness and a fear of confrontation that has made almost any contact with strangers a problem. A few years ago, when I was with a group of friends and we got attacked and uh, I just couldn't deal with it. And as much as I wanted to stay with my group of friends and make sure everyone was all right, I couldn't. And I just legged it as far as I could. I beat myself up about that for a very long time. I'm still even thinking about it, I, I just feel ridiculous for having run away. So at uni, I do journalism, and so that obviously involves talking to a lot of people, and I struggle trying to talk to people and ringing people up and trying to get information from them. And it affects my life in general, really. Just about to take my first remind in of the day. I take four every day. I've been seeing quite a few changes. Things are going really well. Uh, I'm much more confident and less fearful. Nick is a journalism student and his pathological fear of talking to strangers is affecting his grades. But after taking Ramayadin, he says he's feeling confident enough to interview people on the street. Hi, I don't know if you've heard about the airport plans. Good thing is it'll bring jobs to the area. Yeah. Bad thing is it'll bring more traffic to the A2. It'll bring many, many jobs to this area that yeah. we desperately need. Yeah. If they're building an airport nearby, do you mind? Uh, yeah, I do mind, actually. So you're against it, then? Yeah, I'm against it. Fuck the airport. Yeah. So that would have scared me witless before, especially he came in quite close. But, but, whatever. <laughs> Nick's doing so well, his confidence level is just amazing compared to what it was before. In the past, he's been unable to deal with confrontation. So I'm going to send in an actor who's been briefed to be nasty and aggressive, particularly with Jamie, our producer, and I want to see how Nick reacts. I'm just feel talking, way more confident cruise. talking to people, um, way more confident approaching people in general. Fucking things like that. Okay, from the difference from before. Uh, right, it's mate. a huge difference. Right. All right, mate. So just give us a second, if you would. What? So, sorry, I'm just in, I'm just doing an interview. Yeah, don't mind me, mate. Yeah, sorry. On, yes. Cool, cool, cool. cool. No, just, just ignore me. Uh, if you think of going to the future. Mm -hmm. um, going to the future? Well, not going to the future, <laughs> but if you think of going, you know, moving in forwards. Yeah, here, moving forwards. Um, what, do you, what do you sort of hope for? Um, obviously, for uni, it's going to help me no amount. I've got a year left, and it's, it means it's a year I can spend yeah. doing a lot yeah. more. And, uh, okay. Just, I'll What's this? Next. What are you doing? It's a microphone. What are you doing? Filming. Filming? What, what are you making? You're making a film? Yeah. Student film. Student film? Can I be in it? Nah. I can talk to you afterwards once I've finished. Well, sure, Look, come on, talk to me, yeah. I'll All tell right. you loads of stuff, mate. Well, I've, I've been around, I know fucking thing or two. Yeah. Okay, um, well, we can chat, but we can't chat right now. Mm -hmm. So if you can do me a favour, yeah. You just get out of the way so I can just finish off here. I'd really appreciate it. Fuck off. Fuck off. All right. Wait, wait, mate. All right. Just back off. Just. Seriously, he's a, he's a fucking idiot. Look at him, mate. I don't care. Fucking Go, pimp just jump up. What do you want, mate? Don't look at me like that. Back off. Fuck you, mate. Right, don't mate, give me that look, mate. Right, right. I'm fucking serious. You've had your point. Just, Tell him to just... fucking back off, mate. He's still looking at me. Just don't. Don't start anything. Fine. That's... You're a sound bloke, mate. You're a sound bloke. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> be right. Do what you got to do. Jess. Thanks. 
Gillingham. <laughs> you just got right in the middle of me then. It just felt like what I had to do is, well, he had more of a problem with you than he did with me. It's amazing. He's never done anything like that in his life. And he's, you can tell he's really stoked about it himself. I'm so pleased. So pleased for him. It's fantastic. Thanks for stepping in, man. I've done everything I can to increase the power of the placebo in the hope that all the participants experience long-lasting changes. And one of the techniques I'm using is confirmation bias. I've asked everyone to keep a video diary tracking the positive effects the drug is having. By doing this, I'm suggesting to them that the effects will be positive and encouraging them to notice changes which will reinforce the idea that the drug is working. It's day one. Day six. I think I'm on day seven now. I've just been kind of thinking like more about Ramayadin and more about the effects of it. I'm excited to see where it goes and how far I can kind of push myself. Dan Cash's fear of heights is so great that he's never walked over this tiny bridge in his hometown without his friends to distract him. It kind of, I don't even think about walking over it. I don't even consider this way as a way I'd walk on my own. Dan's keen to see if Ramayadin has cured him of his fear. I do feel a bit anxious. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like it. It feels really horrible to be here and to be stood here and to be that. Uh... He decides to take his next capsule and try again. So this is the nice blue capsule that I have to take four times a day. So Dan thinks that each dose takes about 15 minutes to kick in, so um, he's just taken a pill and hopefully this will give him the kick that he needs. It is strange being on this bridge and being this comfortable. I mean, it's still not hugely comfortable, but for me it's a definite improvement. I can tell that already. I mean, it feels really good because obviously I've just crossed it on my own. I can't believe that the effects so far are already so massive. It's Nick and Dan's belief in my fake drug that's giving them permission to act as if their fears are no longer a problem. But for Katie, who's terrified of singing in public, my placebo doesn't seem to be having the same effect. I'm not going to lie, I hadn't felt anything really drastic yet, but I haven't really had the chance to test it. Kate is an actress who wants to be in musicals but has never sung on her own in front of an audience and can't even do it alone at home. When I'm on my own, even if I'm at home and all the windows are shut, doors are shut, it's still that kind of niggling thing that stops you from kind of just being completely free with it. Which is that what? somebody What's the might hear you. So then obviously when you are in front of an audience it's you know... It's massively worse. Yeah, yeah. Like, Katie has agreed to try and busk for me, something she would never have done before taking the myodin. It's really daunting, all these people here. I haven't run away yet, which is a good sign. I'd say this is a bit more than a normal test, because this isn't just like an audition or something. This is putting me in front of a huge unknown audience. Oh, yeah, this is a huge thing for me to do. So I've left Katie uh, over there. I'm quite a distance from her now. I wanted to be quite exposed. This is, has to be a real experience for us, so uh, we're keeping one out of the way. And uh, she is nervous. She's definitely got uh, a lot of apprehension, and I'm nervous for her too, so I'm just really hoping she can do this. It'd be fantastic for her. Up in Memphis, the music's like a heat wave. While I'm in, bound to drive you wild. Mama's baby's a lovely voice. Every school girl, love me tender, leaves and crying in the eye. I think she's stopped. That's not the end of the song. I think she's. I think she's stopped. So what, what happened? From where I was, it sounded great, and then it just sort of stopped. So did you get the same? Yeah, it's like the same feelings. I thought the reminder might completely correct it, but I just had no control anymore. 
and it was kind of getting worse and worse and worse. So I just bailed. Up to that point, though, pretty yeah, pretty amazing. Okay. Yeah. Are you able to carry on? I'd rather not. <laughs> it's okay. Okay. Placebo doesn't work on everyone, and it's possible Ramayadin won't cure Katie's fear of singing in public. But for it to have any chance at all, I need her to see today as a success. Before she started taking Ramayadin, Katie would never have attempted to busk. And if she concentrates on the positive aspects of today, there may still be a chance that the drug will work. It's a month since I started this experiment, and things are still going well with Nick Duffy. Things are a lot easier now, just day-to-day yeah. -day things like going to the shops and, and talking to shopkeepers and not having to look for self-service tills, which in the past I, d I did quite a lot. So you'd have avoided even people at tills before? Um, I'd have gone up to a till, but I wouldn't have liked going up to a till and I'd probably have been silent, whereas as now I can have a conversation with a person at the till without dreading it. So you've had a month of taking this to yeah. um, kind of get used to it. Has it changed how you see the future as opposed to maybe how you felt before you took the reminder? I don't really know what's going to happen in the future, but I'm sure it'll be good and it'll be a laugh and I'm looking forward to it. I am so pleased and I'm so pleased you took the brave step of doing this because that, that must have been a tough one right at the start. Thank you so much. It's been good to see you Thanks. again. Yes, and nice uh, you. I will see you soon. See you soon. Thanks for coming out. Cheers, Nick. Oh, it's amazing. I'm so touched that he's made these changes. Um, but I do also really want to galvanise this and make sure this is real. So I'm planning something for him a little bit later. He has no idea what that is. And I need to go and set it up now. I've taken over his local pub and filled it with actors, stuntmen and secret cameras. Four pound! Nearly four pound for the snake bite. How's that work, Captain? Years ago, Nick and some friends were attacked on the street. He was so frightened that rather than stay and help them, he ran off and he's felt awful about it ever since. I want to see if with his newfound confidence he would behave differently in a similar situation. So a fight is going to break out and Nick's mates Alex and Ethan are going to need his help. I want to see if he'll step in and save them or run away again. I'm sorry, mate, but you forgot to pay for your drink. Mate, why don't you just pay him, yeah? Stop arguing. I've got a tab going. No, no, we don't do tabs in here. I've just come here for a quiet drink. I'll pay me here, mate. How much? How much? For a snake bite. Three pounds sixty. He's so relaxed. He's just laughing and joking and not bothered at all by this loud man. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Have your attention, please. We'll soon be starting a pub quiz in the next five to ten minutes. You'd like to see my friend Raj over here and sign up for it. it only costs you a pound. Pound! And that's what I'm talking about. It's a pound for the pub quiz. It's three pound city, a pound. How's mate, that work? Mate, mate. please. Thank you. If you go sign up and think of a team name, I'll give you the money. Listen, you know to sign up. Uh, it's just like that's it. Nice one. We're the guy with the. Uh, yeah, I keep the pen, mate. Just have that by the pen. Yeah, yeah you, need you need that for the quiz. Mate, do me a favour. Yeah? Just stop it. I can't require a drink, yeah? Just leave it, yeah? Have you a drink, mate? Are you for the quiz? Yeah. With Nick signing up for the quiz, the actors know this is their cue to ramp up the aggression. Here, yeah, mate, listen. I've had enough of you, Ryan. I've been here half an hour. In my ears. Hey, we're trying to have a drink in here. Turn it in, will ya? Well, keep your nose out. Buy your mum a drink. Mug. Fuck it, I'm up now. I'm up now. What's it going to be? What's it going to be? I'm going to hear fucking talking. This is my time now. Any more of it, you're out. Whoa, hey, mate. No, you made it all that. Try smash him and all that. Oh, try be big time and all that. How's that work? Nick, Nick. Sleep, Nick. It's not worth it. You sit down and you shut up. You ain't old, do you? Sit down there. I tell you, sit down and I'll smash your leg. Do as you told. Get out of here. Come out of here. You're this one, all right? Yeah. I'm gonna do you. Do you understand? Nick. Yeah. That's all in us. Yeah. Boom. There you are. Come on in. 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 Come on in.
What happened? The guys just started. Uh, yeah? <laughs> oh, they just got really aggressive and I didn't back down. I don't know what. <laughs> that was so not like me. <laughs> You're amazing. And you saved your friends. Well, I didn't. <laughs> you did. You did. You went back. You saved your friends. You brought them out. You could have just walked off. You didn't. Yeah. Yeah? It's fantastic. Take a breath. You okay? Yeah. All right. So look, I set the whole thing up. It wasn't a real fight, okay? They're just actors. Come back in, come say hello. Get him a beer, get him a beer! Nick has overcome his fears, but there's so much more to this story. And this is the... Magic little pill. I'll take my nighttime pill. You just have the evening one. It's time for me to take my pill again. My group are not the only ones taking Romidin, and it doesn't just cure fear. So far in tonight's show, I've been helping people overcome their fears simply by giving them a placebo. I set up a fake pharmaceutical company called Cicero and created a fake drug, Remidin, which I've said eradicates fear. I can't believe that the effects so far are already so massive. Just back on. Yeah, this is a huge thing for me to see. But what these three don't know is they're not the only ones taking my placebo. I tested the same placebo, Remidin, on various groups of people and told them all it was a cure for something different. So what, what's your allergy? Um, hay fever and dust and pets. Hay fever, horses. I mainly get dermatitis on my hands. Within weeks, all three in our allergy group told us their symptoms had cleared. Matt's dermatitis has disappeared. Her hands still good. And he can wear his wedding ring for the first time in months. I really don't know what it is that you've given us, but I think it should be mandatory. I told one group it would make them more intelligent. And then some of them rumbled us. I'm not a complete idiot. There is a very high possibility that this is obviously a placebo. Maybe it worked too well. And what about smoking? Each year, more than 800,000 people try to give up smoking with the NHS using tablets and nicotine replacement therapies, but 51% of them fail within four weeks. There are six in our smoking group. I want to give up now because I've got quite bad asthma. I think it's something I'd really like to give up. Um, obviously, it's quite expensive. The health implications are obviously a reason that I want to quit smoking. I feel like I could quit, yeah. Most express a strong desire to give up, apart from Yeon. The benefit of it is obvious if I give up, but realistically, I don't know because I enjoy it, so... Desire to change seems to play a big part in the placebo effect. So not surprisingly, it didn't work with Yeon. But I'm meeting up with the others to see how they're getting on. Hello. How, how are you doing? doing? It's good to see you. Obviously, I brought you here to a pub because this is somewhere where previously, I guess, you'd have been out probably wanting a fag by now. So how's it going? Are you all gagging for one or...? No, no, no not at all. Really? You were trying various methods of having yeah, a really yeah. tough time. Yeah, yeah. I've never been able to shake the fact that I'm Nikki, I smoke, that's mm. what I do, whereas I don't feel like that on my at all, and that's really been fantastic. That's fascinating. So aside from kind of what it's physically doing inside your system, there's a kind of... your sense of identity as a smoker has shifted. Definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely. Congratulations. Yay. <laughs> in fact, all the remaining five participants either stop smoking or dramatically cut down. These are big life changes for our participants and they've been effortless. 
but we went to every length we could to pile on the placebo. We changed the colour of the pill based on research. Blue where a calming effect is needed and red for a stimulant. I want the placebo to work on everyone, including Katie, who's been taking Remind in to end her paralysing fear of singing in public. It's been two weeks since her unsuccessful attempt at busking, and Katie has again agreed to put my fake drug to the test. I've arranged an audition for her on stage at one of the West End's biggest musicals, Mamma Mia. I am feeling nervous, but it's controlled. I think when you get in the auditorium, it might be slightly different. Guys, ready? Yes. Okay, next up we have Katie Neen. Okay, Katie. What's that for? Oh, I'm quite nervous. Are you nervous? You seem a bit nervous. Yeah. You know, my, my first impression of you, before you'd even said anything, was nerves. I think we're done here. Doing this today was something that I'd kind of, I don't know, you dream about for such a long time. And it's sad not to be able to come and just go, boom, here I am. This is me. I'm your next leading lady just really, really want to be able to stand in front of an audience and just sing like I can. Katie isn't responding very well to Remiadin, and I may have to accept that the placebo simply won't work for her and find another way to give her the confidence she needs. Meanwhile, Dan Cash, who previously had a fear of heights so great he found it hard to walk over bridges, uh. is doing well on my fake drug. It's just incredible how fast the Ramayadin worked. It's just an amazing feeling. So I'm in Doncaster today to meet Dan again and find out once and for all if his fear of heights and bridges in particular is well and truly gone. <laughs> You're looking off the end of a massive viaduct. I know. This is amazing. And can you stick your head through? Yeah. No wooziness, no dizziness? Yeah, Imagine that sure. yeah. Dan appears to be transformed, but I really want to push him to his limit. How about climbing up these stairs? <laughs> OK. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. OK, I thought you were going to... Well, that's amazing. I thought Rush. you were going to say no. Well, look, we will um, stick a harness on you. I'm going to tell Dan he's been taking a placebo. I want to see if the effects still work. You on? Yes. Good? Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> right. I can't believe you're doing this. This is How just... How do you feel? Show me your fingers. I just I feel you're fine. St you're steady. Yeah. This is amazing. <laughs> you can do anything. <laughs> Let's sit on the uh, on the top one. <clears throat> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Look at you, Dan Cash. I can't believe I'm doing this. <laughs> What's this like? Oh, this is amazing. Now I know that I'm not scared of bridges or heights, that the phobia has gone mm. in myself. I know that I can do this, I've done it. I just feel so much more optimistic, so much more positive. 
And if you were talking to people about taking Ramayadin, if somebody said, oh, I don't know whether to take it or not, what would you say? I'd say do it. Definitely do it. Good. Um, there is something uh, I haven't told you about Ramayadin. Okay. I have some here. Ramayadin is a placebo. It's a sugar pill. Oh, God. Just made it up. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Glanville is an actor. Okay. Cicero doesn't exist. You don't need any of these. You do this completely on your own. Wow. <laughs> All that happened was I think you just gave yourself permission not to worry about it anymore. That's just unbelievable. I mean, that's unbelievable. <laughs> I thought it would work, but I didn't know quite how dramatically it would work. Uh, I thought, you know, maybe we might get you over a bridge, but um, you've been astonishing. And if you can get over this, if you can end up like this, you can, uh, you can pretty much do anything. Um, excellent. I'm going to leave you up here on your own for a bit. Okay. Ah. Would you stand up? Just stand up and take it in. This harness will hold you. You won't fall off. Stand on the stair? Yeah, yeah. Just stand up. I believe we all have the resources to make powerful changes in our lives if we give ourselves permission. And it's this shift in attitude that has allowed Dan to get over his fear of heights. I'm hoping all the participants in this experiment will see a permanent change, even after they find out that Ramidin is just sugar. Ramidin is a placebo. My participants in this experiment are about to find out that the medicine they've been taking is nothing more than a placebo. I've been testing Ramidin on various conditions, including fear, allergies, smoking, and intelligence. Until now, each group thought they were the only ones taking the drug, and that Ramidin had been designed specifically for their circumstances. All the groups are meeting for the first time at what they once thought was a drug company HQ. But in reality, is nothing more than a huge empty office complex. It was never going to be entirely straightforward, was it? Well, you'll have already realised that there's a lot more of you taking Ramidin than you thought. Uh, also that people are taking Ramidin for very different reasons. Up until now, you've credited all of these changes that you've experienced, some of them very dramatic, to a wonder drug that you've been taking. From this point, from right now, you can stop doing that. This is entirely down to you. Ramayadin is a placebo. If it's actually sugar, that's all it is. The reason why this has worked is that you first of all trusted the fact there was a resource, the resources were in there, and then you gave yourself permission to just act as if the thing wasn't a problem. That was not the Ramidin doing it, that was you doing it. You were all told at the beginning that the effects of the Ramidin work after you stop taking it. And now you know why. Because you've set up new ways of thinking and you don't need the placebo anymore to do that. Ramidin doesn't exist. Ramidin is, is your mind. Excellent. Give yourselves a huge hand because you've done your astonishing people. Congratulations. Pretty mad to just find out that Ramayadin is just a placebo and there's nothing in it. Um, and to think that the last 18 days of me not smoking has been done entirely through my own willpower. I don't think finding out it's a placebo is going to change anything really. It's, it's still had the same effect and the effects are still hopefully going to be there and last. There is one person that Ramayadin didn't really work for, and that's Katie. But I have one last chance. 
I feel she made some improvements, so there's a possibility that finding out it was a placebo might be enough to give her an extra burst of confidence as she takes credit for what she has achieved. To test this, I've given her a song to practice, but I haven't told her why. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Hey, so nice okay. to see you. Too. How are you doing? Good. You good? Yeah. Uh, it's been a little while yeah. so, uh, since I last saw you. And how's it been since? Um, I think the placebo thing, when it kind of came out, it made me feel empowered, a lot more powerful than I was before. That was so lovely. And the singing's improved as well, from what I hear. I think it's just confidence, just being able to stand there and just go, yeah, this is just what I'm going to do. That's really good. I'm so delighted. Excellent. Katie, thank you so much, and thank you for coming out today. No problem. And uh, look there, and then you can just sleep. You can stand and sleep quite comfortably. That's good. I'm going to sit you right down and you can sleep quite comfortably there. And I want you to sink right the way down and right the way down. I've used a snap induction on Katie to put her to sleep and get her from A to B. But when she comes round in a few minutes, she'll be completely wide awake and back to normal. Just sit straight back there. That's good. So when you open your eyes, you then get your five minute call. And the curtain opens, and you'll sing the song that you've practiced. It just feels like home. After about a minute then, you'll find yourself waking up. Um, I just want to give you your five minute warning. You can get changed behind the blinds. Um, and if you want to do any final warm ups, now would be a really good time. Thanks. Showtime. Moving into position now. Step here. Step here. And this here's your mark.
fish in the sea You know how I feel River running free You know how I feel Blossom on the tree You know how I feel It's a new dawn, it's a new day It's about three weeks on now and things just haven't died down at all. There's been no slipping back into old ways. If anything, the changes are for good. Even though I know it's a placebo now, everything's still amazing. It's made me realise that I've done it all on my own 